Hi, and welcome back. Today we are going to continue our talk about dimensioning rules. But this time we are going to talk about dimensioning features in relation to each other. So, let's go back to the example from the last lecture where we had a simple metal bracket with two holes. Let's assume that we want to dimension the position of these two holes. Now there are three methods of placing those dimensions in relation to one another. Parallel dimensioning, chain dimensioning, and running dimensioning. In parallel dimensioning, Dimension lines of the different features start from a datum or reference feature like the edge of the part and are placed parallel to each other. This method is commonly used when several features have the same functional relation to the same reference feature. In this case, the relation of these features to each other will be of secondary importance. For example, if the shafts that are to be mounted in these holes are not connected to each other and the distance between the two holes is of secondary importance, Parallel dimensioning is the most used dimensioning method, and that is for a reason. See, when you dimension each feature directly to the datum feature that is important for the function, you can add a tolerance for each feature independent from the other one. And if a change is needed, you can change the position of the feature or the tolerances without having to worry about affecting the other features. One other dimensioning method is chain dimensioning. This method is used when several features are located in a series or chain and their relationship to each other is important. For example, if the shafts that are to be mounted in these holes are connected to each other, you can use chain dimensioning to show the distance between each hole and the next. This method should be avoided when possible. It should only be used when the relative distance between the features is really what's relevant for the function. But why is the use of chain dimensioning not really preferred by many designers? That is because using chain dimensioning results in a tolerance stack up, as the position of the last hole is affected by the position of the one before it, and so on. The third method that we are going to talk about today is running dimensioning. In the running dimensioning, the dimensions are placed in a continuous sequence along the outline of the part. This method is commonly used for parts that have multiple features located at irregular intervals or locations, in this case, the end of the dimension line which points at the reference feature is not an arrow, but a circle. The value of the dimension is placed near the arrowhead and not in the middle of the dimension line. As you can see in this example, you can use running dimensioning to indicate the location of each hole without cluttering the drawing with too many dimensions lines. So in fact, running dimensioning is just another visual form of parallel dimensioning, but it has the same meaning. These were the most important rules of dimensioning in technical drawings. There are various national and international standards for dimensioning, such as ISO 129. These standards provide guidelines for the placement and style of dimensions, as well as the use of tolerances. If you want to dig deeper into this topic, I would suggest that you have a quick look at one of these standards. That's it for this lecture. In the next lecture, we are going to talk about tolerances. See you in the next lecture.